Okay, good day, everybody. Welcome back to Code Camp, DevOps Bootcamp. Today, we're going to be talking about an interesting topic, which is um, very prevalent in the DevOps space um, and has been a revolution since it began to be used in DevOps and in cloud infrastructure. Um, it is containerization, um, which is basically how um, applications are run, it's lightweight images. Um, containerization. Um, today we will go through our content, which includes um, we talk about what Docker is, what is the application Docker, what it does, what's how it is relevant in how it is relevant in the world of containerization. We talk about the history, a brief history of. We're going to look at um, the traditional way deployments were, were done before containerization came into use, which include the traditional deployments and the use of hypervisors. Then we'll come, go into talking about containers. After that, we're going to look at um, some examples of containers. Then we'll go on into talking more about Docker look at the Docker daemon or the Docker agent, and then we we'll talk about networking in Docker. We will then go on to speak about some um, images, um, containers of Docker, the Docker image registry, and finally we'll talk about the commands um, to interact with Docker, Docker API and also um, Docker files. And this looks like how to create one. All right. So going right into it, Docker is a platform for developing, shipping, and running applications inside containers. Um, when you speak of a container, you're talking about a lightweight um, image of a machine or an application. Um, it's, it's like a small package of an application that can be run on any kind of infrastructure. Regardless of the environment or the setup of your of, of your infrastructure, um, say you have a Windows server or you have a Linux server, when an application is packaged um into an image, into a um a Docker image, when it's containerized, which is um packaged into an image containing all the requirements that it needs to run and function and deployed on a server. It can use the requirements and the setup it has um, within that image to run and without needing any additional setup of this of this of this of the um, infrastructure that's running on. So this um, greatly revolutionized the way deployments are done. It took out the problem of um, developers saying it works on my system. Um, and the operator saying, or the system administrator saying, oh, it doesn't work on my server. Or one person saying, I've written this code, it runs fine on my system. And the next person saying, oh, this doesn't run fine on my system, what do we do? So the ability to create um, a, a packaged application and being able to run it anywhere is a big move that Continent and Docker itself um, brought into um, the the computing scene, right? So some components of Docker include the Docker engine, which is the core of Docker, um, which is responsible for um, registering and running Docker images and containers. And then the container itself, which is a lightweight, portable, and self-sufficient in that it has everything it needs to run. The uh, lightweight, portable, and self-sufficient units um, that can run almost anywhere. Right. So um, looking at a brief history of Docker, um, in 2008, um, Linux containers were introduced. And in 2013, we had um, Solomon Hikes, which came up with the concept of creating Docker. Um, the evolution from a simple project um, started 
by Solomon Hikes in in a local corporation, which um blossomed into a large um ecosystem of containerization that is used in many many software companies and with many software teams and among many software engineers even today. So taking us back a bit still on the history. In the past, if you have an application that you want to deploy for your users, um, after writing your piece of software, after writing your piece of code, um, you now have to look for a, an environment, a computer, where you can put that product, put that code, put that application for it to run and give that computer access to the users to, to be able to interact with your code. Um, you have the, the concept of servers and clients, right? So when you build your application, you then deploy that application to a server and your application runs on that server. And your clients, which are your users, connect to that server to be able to use your products, right? That was the basic flow, the basic deployment um, strategy that was in use. So you have a large server, maybe IBM, Dell, whichever one, um, and applications are just deployed on that server. Um, this had the challenge where um, the server that you're, you have deployed could be a large server that you purchased, but the application you're deploying on it might not be optimizing the resources of that server, right? So if you have a large server and just um, an application that might not have as much traffic. So you see that you're um, wasting resources on that server. And by so doing, um, wasting money in, 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 in a sense, right? So, and, and deployment was inflexible um, in that you, you can't, you can't um, easily make changes to deployments, right? And then finally you're scaling. When you have a physical server um, that, is deploy that you're deploying your whole application to, scaling becomes difficult and becomes a huge problem um, for your team. So the, the concept of hypervisors is, is now developed where you have a single server and you have an application that is deployed on this your server and call the hypervisor. But this hypervisor helps to um, partition and break down the resources of your application so that they can be used by various applications, right? You have a single server, maybe um, vSphere or VMware ESXi um, as your hardware. And on top of that, you have your hypervisor which then you can use to partition resources and make them available to your various applications, right? Can, from your server having maybe 50 gigabytes of memory and maybe you can now break that down into maybe you can now give five gigabytes out of that to one application maybe three gigabytes on other applications to use. So you are able to use a hypervisor to break down and partition right, the resources um, of a single server to various applications or various users um, and have them as isolated environments. So that's one partition is not aware of the next partition. Right, so that's what type of version do. Um, in comparison to Docker, hypervisors are still um, heavier, right? So whereas Docker offers a lightweight um, means to deploy your application, hypervisors in, in, in relation to that have a more heavy strategy of um, breaking down resources.
now container container additions help help us to package applications and their dependencies say you have a python application you can package your python application with your the various libraries you have imported the various things you need to do your virtual environment you can package them um you can package commands to run your application you can package commands to expose ports within um, the environment you deploy to so basically all the dependencies all the operations needed can be packaged within um, a single image and that image can now be deployed on any environment um, and run as an, a single application right so it has the advantage of of maintaining consistency of the application across various platforms so you don't need to be tweaking your um, deployment or your application um, to work differently on different platforms, right? Um, it's improved the efficiency and the resource utilization of the applications because um, applications can now be packaged as more lightweight um, services that can be run in the environment. And they can scale out in the way you need them to um, provision more um, images to run using the Docker engine. Or you can make the, the image to use more resources um, when needed. Some of the use cases of, uh, of this are from um, microservice architectures. That's where um, you have an application that is made up of loosely coupled services. Say you have an application um, that has one separate service for um, user registration, for example, another service for um, the portal, another service for uh, maybe messaging, another service for payments or order placements. And these are different services that can be packaged and different container images and um, coupled loosely through um, message filters or events that can couple the system and allow these um, various services to pass messages among each other. That's the, that's what forms a microservice architecture. So um, services and images, Docker images, containerized applications are great um, to use in a microservice architecture. Um, you can also use it to spin up um, quick environments for to run tests that run um, develop, use as a development environment to um, run tests and carry out uh, proof of concepts um, before deploying to your main uh, production environments. Um, Containers can also be used in production environments, of course, but what this what I'm trying to say here is that um, the ease of which you can create a container and create a containerized application and a containerized environment uh, makes it a, a great functionality for dev and set environments. Right? Um, also for uh, continuous integration and continuous deployments, um, you can easily integrates new features into a container image and, and uh, upgrade the container image as well to a new version. So Docker. Docker, like we um, have explained before, offers an open source platform for creating and running containers. Um, you, you have the Docker engine, which so it's like an agent or a daemon or a process that runs within your system and helps to create and run images. You also have your Docker hub, which is your like your registry or your repository where you can save images either publicly or privately. And then your Docker Compose is a tool that you can use with Docker to orchestrate multiple containers, like we um, said using uh, microservice, like in a microservice architecture, right? So um, 
the Docker daemon or the Docker engine um, is a process, a background service that's, that manages your images on your computer or on your on your server. Um, had handles things like uh, the container image, running the container image, handling the container resources, including networking and uh, storage, and processing uh, power. It's all handled for the containers and for your images by the Docker daemon. And communication, listening for the commands that are sent to the Docker API using your Docker Using your various Docker commands, the Docker daemon helps to um, listen for those commands and execute them um, on the Docker images and the Docker objects. Let's talk in Docker. Docker allows um, containers to be able to communicate with each other and also with the host system, right? So, um, in a in a Docker. When you set up Docker in your system and you're running Docker, you're running images with Docker, Docker can help you to create um, communication networks between containers that containers can communicate with. And it can also create networks that the containers can use to communicate with the host machine. Um, so it's kind of creates within Docker a virtualized network, which can be your bridge network. So you can create virtualized network and connect various services, right? Various containers to that network so that you can send packets from one container to another. Um, you can also create a host um, type of network within Docker that helps you to create um, send messages from the containers to your host or from the container to um, the node that the container is running on, the computer, the server that the container is running on. Um, um, without, if it's not on host, it's usually a bridge network which isolates the network and creates a virtual network among the, the images and the container that you're running on your server. The overlay um, type of network in Docker helps you to connect with multiple hosts from your Docker image. Now, the most widely used among um, all of these are the bridge network or the host network. These are the networks you usually interact with when you're working with Docker. Um, but there are so many other types of networks within Docker that are used for um, many different use cases. So in Docker image, um, in, like the package or the template that is created um, to be run on various environments, right? You can create a self-sufficient unit, a package as it were of, of your application. Um, and that is created and as a um, read-only template. As a Docker image. Now, when a Docker image is executed, that's when it is known as a Docker container, when it is running. So the Docker containers are running instances of Docker images. So you can create, you can have an ins an, a, an image of a Python application, and you can use it to deploy three replicas of that one image. So you can use it to deploy three um, exact running executions of that your one Docker application that I've created. Um, I'd have to um, be able to process more traffic or just to have a um, more use of resources, right, to uh, optimize performance, right? So a Docker container is a running instance of Docker images. And your Docker image is the packaged um, version of your environment or your application. So a Docker container can be created as the initialization where the, top, the, the container is created. Um, it can be run. When it's run, it can be stopped or it can, and it can also be deleted from 
the Docker environments. So when you create an image, um, Docker provides a platform where your image can be stored or hosted, either publicly to give people access to it to be able to use your image, um, or privately, um, if you don't want your image to be publicly accessible. So the various organizations, um, whichever one you can think of, Ubuntu, um, Nginx, MySQL, Postgres, they all have Docker images. They all have images of setups that you can um, run on your system as containers, right? And they are all hosted on Docker Hub, and we can look at that later. Um, some commands you can use to interact with Docker include Docker Run, which helps you to run Docker containers um, and executes them. You have Docker PS, which displays the various processes that Docker has created. Um, you have Docker Stop, which can be used to stop a running container. Uh, you have the Docker Remove, which can be used to remove um, a container um, after it has been stopped or deleted, after it has been stopped or halted. You also have the Docker pool, which is used to pull or basically download an, uh, an image from, a, a, from an image repository, either Docker Hub or any other public or private um, image registry. You have the Docker build, which creates a Docker image of your environment or of your application. And then you have Docker push, which is used to um, push your image to your image registry. Docker login is also Docker login is also another command that is used to log into your Docker image registry uh, to either upload or interact with it. Um, when you're creating a Docker file. There are also, so also some other commands that you can use within your Docker file. Um, to set your base image, use the from keyword. And you can use the run to execute uh, to execute a command within your image. The CMD is used to create an entry point to your, your to create an executable entry point to your image when it is run as a container. Um, expose open some ports um, within your Docker image and the copy is used to copy files or folders from your local um, or from a, a path within your host system into your Docker image. Okay, so that's a pretty um, foundational rundown of what Docker is and the various things that we can do with Docker. Um, we have some exercises here that we can work with, but let's see if we have any questions based on what, what has been spoken about. Are there any questions before we go into any answer? Okay, one question um, from Michael Wogan. Okay, so I actually wanted to ask out of curiosity though. So when you mean Docker having containers or Docker handling projects as containers, does it mean that compared to hypervisor, which is actually connected to a large server, Docker has its own set of servers and but they just manage it separately or how did that process go under the hood? Um, a hypervisor basically creates, um, it's used to 
create a layer or an, an operating system. It's like an engine that can um, separate the resources of your server into different environments that you can now run your applications on. So you're still running your application and um, the way it is. You're just using the hypervisor to configure an environment. Whereas Docker helps to package um, your application like uh, a self-sufficient application, a self-sufficient package that you can run anywhere. And Docker actually can embed an OS image because Docker, Docker images are like layered on top of each other. So you can layer an OS image on top of your, you can layer your application on top of a um, image of an OS. So basically you can have your image of uh, a Linux application, right? Deployed within a Windows environment using Docker, right? for a very specific use case, um, but that can be done with hypervisor. I don't know if the difference is clear, especially with this example. Okay, so from what you said, Docker actually sounds, it's, it's, it feels like it's an external, like it's a virtual environment on this, but it can act like a virtual environment on with the use of images, correct? Yes, you can say that it packages um package application with the environment, all its all the dependencies and, and things it needs to run within it. Okay, so it's more like an uh like a like a big grant variant compared to like you know the support. Thanks. I don't know, it's it's different from big grant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Abiri. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for this. I I wanted to find out um what happens when you don't remove your Docker image. Okay, so let's say the port you're using, it's it will be occupied till you do remove it, right? Uh, the port you're using, is it on your host? Hey, let's say your local host, yes. And probably you want to deploy another image. Okay. Because you, you are likely to get instances of you're trying to deploy another image and he's saying the, the port is not available and you can't do that. So uh, is it because of a result so as is this as a result of you're not having deleted the one you had running before? Yes, that's a, that's that's possible. There's a possibility, especially when you are um, running the Docker image on the host network right so it's possible okay. that it can if it's if it's listening at a particular port already um you can have another application the same way too so yeah that that can be a possible problem that you can encounter which can be solved the Or you can also change the person. Okay.
Okay, so here right now, I'm in Docker Hub, which is the image registry, basically for Docker. And you can see that there are various applications here that you can pull this image, pull images off and run um, as, in, as the containers. So you have various applications, you have Mongo, you have your Apache server, the Shrabbit MQ traffic. Um, some of the ones we know, we have Nginx here, we have an Ubuntu machine, we have Python, right? So you can use these to create Docker images. I'm going to sign in to my Docker Hub right now. Okay, so we are signed in now. Um, these are some of the images that I have. This is my personal repository, but I've made this public. So um, these are some images that I've created by myself. Um, if I go to explore, I can see some um, images from different organizations, right? Um, Okay, for that we can see that I guess. So basically, um, these are various images that you can run. Like influx DB, there's tra traffic here. Um, there are databases that you can use. Okay, we can, let me check here. The among these ones. There's WordPress here that you can use in AWS Linux. Okay, so I'm just going to search for Ubuntu. Okay, so we can see this an Ubuntu image right here that you can work with. Um, there are various tags. Which have various um, versions of this. So for Ubuntu, we can look at a Docker file of Ubuntu um, to see how this Ubuntu image was built. And this is Ubuntu 22.04. Um, this is Ubuntu 20.04, which has name as Focal. So, let me see if I can find it like this. So in addition to this Docker environment that is set up here, um, I also have a Docker engine running on my system. So I can use to show you some of them. Okay. 
I'm going to share my screen now. So you have, I have this Docker desktop, um, which is basically a GUI of the Docker engine uh, that's running on my system. If I go to my terminal as well, I go to my terminal, I can also see I can also see that I have Docker CLI installed here. Right? If I do Docker it shows me that. Um this can also show me. Some of the Docker images that I have in my system. Okay. So you can see some of the Docker images that I have on my system right now. Um, I can come to the Docker Explore page and pull the Docker image. Say I want to pull, let's see this hello world. Um, I think this might be a good example. Okay. So this is a Docker file that creates this, this image here. So it simply has um from scratch, which is a way of saying starts on a blank state, um, then it copies hello, which is this file here, into Docker, and then it runs it as it's good. So if I pull this using Docker pull, hello world, and to pull this image from the Docker hub and run it on my system. So if I list my Docker images again, I can now see that Hello World has been pulled here, right? Um, and I can run that using Docker run Hello World. That's just a basic description of what Docker does. So, so that that brings us to the end of this class. Um, um, I hope we've been able to understand some things about using Docker and working with Docker images. In our next class, we'll go over how to create a Docker image using the Docker file. And basically, Dockerize an application and run that application as a content. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, if there are any questions, I can take some questions.
All right, so in the absence of questions, um, thank you very much everyone for coming to class today. Um, I'll see you in the next one where we can do some more facts first. Take it there. And bye.